Hello and welcome to another edition of Online Theatre School. Today we're going to be looking at freeze frames. Now freeze frames are a really good tool. They can be used to start and open a performance, but also they can be used as a rehearsal technique. And not only that, they can be used during a performance to mark a specific moment. A good freeze frame compared to a bad freeze frame is immediately obvious. And today we're going to be looking at how to create a successful freeze frame. If you look here, you'll notice an example of a really good freeze frame. Now, the reason it's really good is because this freeze frame tells a story. Look at each of those actors there. Each actor, by their facial expressions, by their body language, reveals something to the audience. We want to know more. We want to know what happened before. We're intrigued. We're interested. If you look here at this lady, you'll see her body language shows an element of desperation. She appears to be pleading. What is she asking for? What does she want? Does she need help? We don't know the answer, but by this freeze frame, we start to make guesses in our mind. Again, look at her friend or sibling. Her hand appears to be on her shoulder. What does that tell us? It tells her that maybe she's being supportive. Maybe that she's on her side. Maybe she's encouraging her. Whatever it is, we start to ask questions as an audience. And this is what builds a good freeze frame. Look at this person here. Her hands are clasped. What does that mean? Does it mean that she's reserved? Does it mean that she's holding back? Does it mean that she doesn't want to be involved? Does it mean that she agrees or disagrees? The body language that she conveys is starting to tell us a story. If you look here, the facial expressions of this person who's pleading is very different to the other people in the scene. And lastly, the gentleman here sat here looks deep in thought. This freeze frame here is an excellent example of what a freeze frame should do. It leaves an audience asking questions. But not only that, if it was during a rehearsal process, it would encourage you as an actor, if you're using freeze frames in rehearsals, to stop and think about your character's facial expressions, their body language and their thoughts at this particular moment in a scene or play. So what is a freeze frame? Quite simply, it is a group of actors or models, motionless and representing a scene from a story or a moment in history. It's a frozen moment in time. And this can be used during a show to mark a specific moment. But also, as I said before, it can be used throughout the performance or to begin or end a performance to give it a strong beginning or a strong ending. Now, there are good and bad examples of freeze frames. Look at these two here. Another example of an excellent freeze frame. Why is it so good? Well, we don't know what's happening here, but we can tell by their facial expressions, by their body language, by the fact they've chosen to be sat down, so much about how their characters are feeling and what they're going through. The fact that one is comforting the other, the fact that one is looking up, almost pleading for help, pleading for advice, pleading for some support. The fact that one of the gentleman's heads is crouched right down, really looking like he's in pain. If we took this image alone, and took away the whole play, already the audience can tell so much about these two characters, or at the very least, begin to infer some meaning from this scene. So what makes a good freeze frame and what makes a bad freeze frame? Well, it's all about what you do in that picture, in that moment. Positioning, levels, and facial expressions. If you're all stood in one straight line, all doing the same thing with your face, all doing the same things with your hands and body, it doesn't actually tell us much about the individuality of each character. So it's really important to think about the positioning of each of your characters. Maybe one person can be stood away from the others. Maybe they could be a small group and then one person on the outskirts. That could show that they're isolated from the scene using proxemics. That's another video on the online theatre school. Also, levels. Levels is a really interesting way of keeping your picture dynamic. One person might be stood, one person might be sat, one person might be crouched over. If you look at these pictures here, you'll see they've used levels in a really interesting way. So the positioning of your actors, the levels, and of course, your facial expressions. If you bring these three things together, you'll create a successful freeze frame. If you look here at this image on the left and compared to the image on the right, you'll see what I mean. Yes, the first image there, Fencing, okay. But if I was an audience, I would just merely see fencing. If I look at the second image though, I start to see a sense of drama. 
I start to see that one person has a higher status than the other person. I start to think that somebody might be defeated at any moment. I start to question who are the characters? How do they know each other? What's happened before this moment? What's going to happen after it? Just by changing the levels of the actors, the positioning of the actors, you start to create a whole story around that image. So, if you want to practice this, here's a task you can do. The poem Tiger Tiger by William Blake. What I want you to do is I want you to read through this poem. Now, don't worry if you don't understand the poem. That's not the main part of the task. What's important here is that you pick three sentences or three words that really stand out, that make you think about other ideas. When you've picked those three sentences or three words, you're going to create three separate freeze frames. Remember, using levelling, positioning and facial expressions. Now, your freeze frames do not need to connect to the poem itself. The poem is just a way of getting you to come up with new ideas. You're using the poem as a stimulus. So don't worry if your freeze frames don't entirely match the poem itself. Once you've got your three freeze frames, you're then going to bring them all together. You're going to create a performance. What you're going to do is connect those three freeze frames using a successful transition. How can you make your transitions fluid? What I mean by that is how can you go from freeze frame one to freeze frame two to freeze frame three without stopping and starting and coming out of character? Think about how you can make it really, really fluid. Maybe you'll do the transition between one and two in slow motion. Maybe you'll do it in a stylized way. Perhaps you might spin on the spot or maybe you'll grow as the character or maybe you'll do it by saying a few words. Whatever it is you choose to do, I want you to think about your three freeze frames and then link all three together. So what you're going to do now is you're going to create three freeze frames based on this poem. So you might pick the words burning bright. You might pick the word fire. You might put some words together and have wings dare he aspire. Once you've got those three freeze frames, you're going to link them all together using a nice, smooth transition. Now, if you want to do some more, what you can do is you can add some music underneath your freeze frames, or you can even add one for each stanza. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six stanzas. You could have six separate freeze frames. And in between each freeze frame, a smooth transition, so maybe slow motion, and then put some music underneath all that. Once you've done that, if you want, you can upload using the hashtag online theatre school so you can share the work. And what I'll do is I'll put an example at the end of this video of some other classes that have done this exact exercise and have created freeze frames around this poem. So what makes a successful freeze frame? Good levels, good positioning, good facial expressions, and most importantly, your freeze frame tells a story. Best of luck and look forward to seeing them uploaded. Please do subscribe. We have lots of online theatre school lessons as well as interviews with industry professionals. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burnt the fire of thine eyes. On what wings dare he aspire? What the hand dare seize the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of thy heart? And when thy heart began to beat, what dread hand and what dread feet what the hammer, what the chain, in what furnace was thy brain, what the anvil, what dread grasp, dare its deadly terrors clasp, when the spears and stars threw down their spears and stars, and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright In the forests of the night What immortal hand or eye Dare frame thy fearful 